Here at eFix, we get asked to look at a lot of EV charging points. We've got one on the table today. What makes this one special, Gordon? Okay, well, this one's come all the way from Norway, Gary. And it's not just an EV charger. It's described as an EV charging robot manufactured by EZ in Norway. Okay, and what problem does it solve then? What, what makes this one special? Okay, so we have to think about EVs, where we are today, possibly in an office block or hotels. People might have installed one or two charge points. And what's that thing we hear? Whenever we go and visit one of these installations, what do people say? Future proof. So in other words, we're thinking of the mains end, the supply cable to that, and the ducting, etc., coming out to it in order that we can perhaps in the future add more EV charging points. Okay, well, believe it or not, the charge I've got in front of me, you can fit 101 of them on a single circuit. So you're telling me I can take a single supply from the distribution board to 101 EV charging points on one fuse? That's it. That's going to solve a lot of problems, but you're going to need to explain a little bit more to me, Gordon. Okay, well, I think we best get this out of the box so we can see some of those features. Really interesting to see this easy charging unit. Okay, well, let's get this nice recycled packaging opened up. Uh, I'll put the unit there. So there's our easy charger. Now, I would say for a three phase 22 kilowatt charger, that is one compact unit. It is, and looking at it, oh, I love that design. Imagine you've got 30 or 40 of those attached to the outside of the building. That's a very nice looking unit. Yeah, so a lot of them look a bit agricultural, but let's have a look under the cover to see what's hiding under there. Okay, so get in with a special key, lift the rubber flap at the bottom, insert that, and, and we we'll separate, separate the two. Okay. Immediately, Gary, I see something you get really excited about, and that's grommets and ceiling plugs and screws Thank and you, you can have that for the second part of this video where Gary's actually going to see how easy this is to install and you're going to commission it yeah so you'll need your instructions which Thank you will read <laughs> and I'll be back with the commissioning uh, so this unit is different to a lot of other chargers we see on the market in which it has a two-part um, housing to it one is the charger and the second part is a base plate so, so you can separate the two yeah separate the two right that clicks out of there Okay, that's, yeah, that's really good. Things I'm not seeing that I'm used to seeing. I'm not seeing a switch, I'm not seeing a, a liquid crystal display, and I'm certainly not seeing anything like a CT uh, clamp or connections for one, Gordon. Yeah, well, that's the, that's the clever part of this. So everything, yeah, trust me, it has everything in there that it needs to have, the right contactors, inbuilt RCD function, uh, but the communication is the clever bit. So it communicates wirelessly, so it can connect to the Wi-Fi network or via the mobile phone network. Right. When you install the unit, you tell the master unit what circuit rating it's connected to, and then it wirelessly communicates with others on the same circuit to dynamically share the load to make sure you don't exceed that circuit breaker. So I'm just gonna pull a cable from the distribution board uh, to each charging points in turn. I don't need to pull in a Cat5 or a Cat6 cable and because it knows the size of the fuse, let's say 32 amps, it won't ever draw more than that across, say, 30, 40, or however many EV charging points you've put in. Yeah, and that's the really clever bit about this system. Now, people are immediately going to be thinking, oh, yeah, but, you know, everyone wants to charge at full power for full part of the time. So there's no limit in charging at 22 kilowatts from each charger. But let's not forget the problem in EV charging is how much power does the building actually have available? Yeah. And that's where technology like this really works. So we've probably got to think of it in a different way now. Let's say that there's 40 EV charging points and people turn up for work at between eight and nine, they plug themselves in. They're not necessarily going to fully charge their vehicle up. They're going to take some of the charge that is available. Maybe they've made a 10 mile journey to work. Strictly speaking, you only need 10 miles of energy to get back. And that's a different thinking, isn't it? Yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of words we hear at the moment. It's called EV grazing. You plug in and take power that's available to you. But yeah, different people need different amounts of power. You might have a sales rep who needs a lot of power putting into the car because he's got a long journey coming up. But the people who say are based in the office might have only used that power they have to commute backwards and forwards to work. So as long as you can replenish that during the day, you're not going to run into a problem in that range anxiety we hear about a lot. So as you've set me the task in video number two to install one of these easy EV charging points, can you go through some of the key features from the installation point of view? Okay, well, let's start with a base plate because this is where some different thinking has gone in, when, especially when it comes to IP rating. So this is rated at IP34. Right. Which, yeah, you go, the shocked look. People are normally thinking of IP65, 66, 67, but 
um, you know, think of the Norwegian climate where this was designed and where loads of them are installed, very wet, can be very cold, lots of sea air. IP34 is fine as long as water can get in and get out and not cause any damage. Ah, that makes logical sense, yeah. So it comes in but also can get out. Okay. Yeah, so we've got these uh, various holes at the bottom uh, and there's lots of cable entries. So you can, uh, you know, we're going to be looping in and looping out. Right. So I'm suggesting on our install, we're going to go in these top entries here, but you could also come from behind or underneath the unit as well. So plenty of options there. Plenty of options. I notice also we've got some cord grips in here, so I can actually secure the cables. What type of cable are you going to get me to wire these so in? So we're going to be using a high tough cable, which is essentially armoured cable without the armour. Um, and again, that's, a, that's becoming quite frequently used on EV installations at the moment. When you bring the, um, the actual charge unit together, you've got these, these plug-in uh, connections here. It's just a case of drop that in place, slide it together, a good click, and now the unit is rated at IP54. Ah, right, okay, that, that's, that's good. That makes some logical sense. So we're gonna be using this high tough cable. We've got the IP rating when the two units have been put together. I also see out the corner of my eye some lovely new versions of the cover as oh, well. There is. The colors okay, down, I know like you the like it. one. I'd suggest this could be Star Wars inspired, Gary. I know you like your Star Wars. <laughs> I'm thinking the uh, Emperor's Guard, Stormtrooper and Darth Vader for colours. I know there's other colours in the scheme, but thank you for choosing these ones. Yeah, very Star Wars yeah, and themed. And a nice E-Fix red. Yeah. And they also do this cover here. Right. Which doesn't actually have a cover plug in it. Right. So what's that an aid of then? So that's it again. Remove my charging unit. This is a blank cover, right. so imagine our installation where we're going to have a hundred charge points installed. You might choose to first fix the base and then you put this cover on and then come back at a later date to actually install the charge module. So you could install say 20 or 40, actually wire all 40 in, but actually on 20 of them just put this blank play on, not fitting this at all, and then you've also got your future growth in there all ready to go. Exactly. Oh, that's really good. So, one last thing, possibly before we move on to the installation phase, is we're normally used to seeing units with either tethered or untethered. Uh, easy, only make an untethered unit, which you plug in your own lead, right, okay. or one that they manufacture. Yeah. The thinking behind that is, obviously, if you've got a commercial installation, do you really want to be responsible for lots of different leads that can be left trailing on the ground, subject to damage, then no, you probably don't. So I've plugged my EV charging lead in and I've moved away from my vehicle. What's stopping somebody actually unplugging it? Okay, another great feature that's built in is this solenoid that will lock your cable in. So that's great if you were, yes, away from your car. Say you were in an apartment block and that's your dedicated charger, you could leave your lead permanently connected and drive off. So we've seen there some great features of the EZ EV charging point. In our next video, I'm gonna go about installing one of these and showing you how to connect them up and perhaps how simple it is to do that. And you're gonna show us, Gordon, how to commission it. So look out for the next video.